Hey, we're at CES, we're at Valve's booth, and we just spent a little time with the radically different Steam controller, Valve's new gamepad that it plans to ship with Steam machines later this year. It takes a little bit of getting used to. You know, it's trying to accomplish a lot of different things. Uh, it's very different from an Xbox 360 or PlayStation gamepad, uh, but it's trying to replicate a bunch of control schemes. It's trying to be a mouse and keyboard, it's trying to be a fighting game controller, it's trying to be a 2D game controller. And it's actually pretty good at approximating a lot of those things. One of the features I really wanted to be able to provide is cursor control, right? There's probably 80% of the games on Steam are just 2D games that you control with a 2D cursor. We built tons of hundreds, literally hundreds of prototypes of different uh, configurations. They really settled down to be uh, centered around using a trackball mm -hmm. um, and a trackpad. It's very different from an experience you would have with a you know Xbox 360 or a uh, PlayStation gamepad. Um, as you move around, you kind of you kind of feel what feel, almost feels like a little. It feels like a little ball bearing kind of moving underneath as you, as you as you scroll along and sweep across the face of the trackpad, and you know, it kind of is a little bit of a barrier for getting over. Uh, your thoughts on how you might control this thing initially, but you know, even in the few minutes that we've spent with it, uh, it's starting to make a lot more sense. For a game like Dota, you know, that we're probably not gonna be able to match the full on, you know, you're not gonna take Dendi and, you know, sure, have yeah. him play at his top level with the controller, but that's not really the goal, right? Okay. And that's definitely true of the controller in general. Like, people who are really comfortable, you know, TF2 players who are really happy with their mouse and keyboard, like, we're in no way saying that that is changing or going okay. away, that is fantastic. What we're trying to do is provide a way to get close to that performance, but kick back on your couch, right? Yeah. And so, you know, that's really the goal is to get, you know, as close as we can to that performance level. And like a lot of Valve products, including the Steam machines themselves, you know, it seems like there's a lot of customization, a lot of room to tailor that gamepad uh, to your needs. And with developers finally kind of getting their hands on it and being able to build their games with the Steam controller in mind, it seems like it really could be a viable option for living room PC gaming. You can actually adjust uh, how these things behave. You can adjust the bindings, you can adjust the sensitivity, and I'm just going to show you what that looks like right now. Just go into this uh, uh, control overlay, and we'll, we'll, we're looking at the bindings. We're just going to move down. Uh, uh, let's see, we're going to modify that. And uh, you can, what, what's helpful for me is actually changing the, the dead zone here so I can kind of bring it down uh, to 30%. You can see how that changes on the, uh, on the little control area there. Do you guys kind of have like a kind of a price range target that you're looking at for, for this uh, if it's sold separately? Um, our target is to keep it kind of around the price that other controllers in the market are okay. generally. So, I mean, we don't have like a firm point, that, you know, but it's not going to be anymore. It's not, it won't be surprisingly expensive or anything compared to what other products are. It's really exciting to see Valve kind of shake up the gamepad and start introducing some features that we haven't seen uh, in a space that's kind of kind of settled over the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, so to see some of the innovations they're making there, it's pretty exciting.